AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Chrysler says car sales could be bad for years to come. Indian company Mahindra will start selling in the USA later this year. And we all get our first look at BMW's progressive activity vehicle. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, February 13, 2009, and now the news. The Associated Press reports out of Tokyo that Nissan is reviewing some of the joint projects it was going to do with Chrysler. Specifically, it is trying to decide whether to go through with the deal to have Chrysler make Titan pickup trucks for Nissan, and for Nissan to make a small car for Chrysler. Nissan says it has to do with cost cutting, but my guess it also has to do with the possibility Fiat is going to end up taking control of Chrysler. Meanwhile, Reuters reports that Chrysler is prepared to survive even if car sales stay at their present levels for the next four years. And it quotes Chrysler Vice Chairman Jim Press as saying that the current slump is not an aberration and that the industry better get used to running at those sales levels. Maybe one reason he's saying that is that the proposed tax break for new vehicle purchases has been scaled back in the final version of the economic stimulus bill. Originally, the proposal would have made interest on auto loans and the sales and excise taxes on new vehicle purchases deductible on federal taxes. But now, according to AutoEat, the tax break makes only sales and excise taxes deductible. Global Vehicles USA will begin distributing pickup trucks built in India by Mahindra and Mahindra to southeastern U.S. dealerships this December. According to Wards, there will be two two-door and two four-door pickups, each available with either two or four-wheel drive. Pricing is not available yet. Global Vehicles is based in Alpharetta, Georgia, and has signed over 300 dealers so far. The company eventually plans to build a factory in the U.S. to assemble the trucks from kits. Ahead of next month's Geneva Motor Show, pictures of BMW's new 5 Series Gran Turismo have leaked on the internet. The 5 Series GT looks a lot like an X6 that got squashed with a similar sloping roof and hatchback. The hatch is actually kind of cool. It can open in two different ways, really wide or like a regular trunk. According to Autoblog, the company is billing it as a progressive activity vehicle, whatever the heck that means. Makes me think Progressive Insurance is gonna sue them over that name. And finally, Gasgoo.com reports that there are more than 130 independent car makers in China. The top 10 brands made almost 8 million vehicles last year, but together the remaining 120 automakers made fewer than 2 million. Amazingly, 10 Chinese automakers did not make a single car last year. Could that be the ultimate in cost cutting? I remember a recession years ago when a Ford executive said, imagine how much money we could save if we just stopped making cars. Coming up next, a preview of this week's episode of AutoLine Detroit, where we take a look inside Carbon Motors. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. This week on AutoLine Detroit, I'm joined by William Santana Lee, the CEO of Carbon Motors, which, for the first time ever, is coming out with a car exclusively designed for law enforcement. Tell me about some of the things that you've incorporated into the design. Like, what, what, what's this circle hole here? This is a nighttime vision capability, and below that you've got two automatic license plate recognition cameras. And what those will do is it will scan 1,500 license plates a minute and run that against a database of the criminal database and see if there's any fel felonies or abductions or what have you. And it as, uh, gives the officer the opportunity to, you know, apprehend the right people. Let's look at uh, some of the other items uh, that sure. you've got here, too. Looks like you've built a spotlight into the mirror housing here. There are over 425,000 law enforcement vehicles that patrol our country. 
and most of those cars are actually all of them. It's a myth that there's a police car. These are retail passenger cars that are up to $55,000 worth of equipment are added to them to turn them into uh, a vehicle that the law enforcement could attempt to use. And what we've done here is try to... If you want to hear the rest of my discussion with Bill Lee, you can watch the entire episode of AutoLine Detroit on our website right now. Well, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to announce the winner of this week's trivia contest. We challenged you to identify a certain design element that BMWs are known for. We asked for the name of the kick or kink found at the base of their C-pillars. And the answer is, it's the Hoffmeister kink. Named after former BMW design director Wilhelm Hoffmeister, this trademark styling element formally debuted in 1961 on the company's 1500 sedan, and it's been in use ever since. The bent C-pillar look has also been picked up by many other automakers and employed on everything from luxury cars to inexpensive hatchbacks. And as always, my crack team has randomly selected today's winner from the pool of correct responses. Pookie, the envelope, please. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, well, how sweet. It's, it's a Valentine's Day uh. gift. Oh, you're making up for not being here last yeah, week. Right. And here's the envelope, and what's this? Okay. A, a, a chocolate? Mm -hmm. Better be chocolate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's chocolate. And the winner is Tom Livingston from Cambridge, Ontario in Canada. Congratulations, Tom. You've just won a special edition AutoLine Detroit 10th anniversary DVD featuring some of my favorite shows. Anyway, that does it for today's show. But one more thing before we go. Next Thursday, we'll be doing a must-see live webcast all about the viability plans from GM and Chrysler, whether they're going to work. Joining me for that live webcast will be Tom Walsh, the business editor for the Detroit Free Press, John Stoll from the Wall Street Journal, and Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics. That's next Thursday at noon Eastern Standard Time or 1700 hours Greenwich Mean Time. And oh yeah, I also want to thank all of you who wrote in to tell me how to open a DocX document. Thanks for your help and for watching. We'll see you next week. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. AutoLine Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutoLineDetroit.tv.